And on a prior video, I reviewed the Godia GT100 Plus, which is a very interesting tool that gives you access to test the vehicle's computer, but also gives us access to the immobilizer function if we lost the keys to the vehicle. Now, recently, Godia has released a similar tool in a smaller version, which is the GT105. Now, this tool is a little different from the GT100 because this tool does give us direct access to the immobilizer module and also can tell us if the computer is talking or communicating, which is the very first step whenever we're diagnosing if we have a broken computer in a very small package, also a lower cost point versus the GT100 Plus. And on this video, I'm gonna show you what you get when you purchase one of the GT105 tools, and I'm also gonna show you how it works. As always, I'd like to remind you that I have placed a link in the description down below if you wanna look at this tool further or acquire one for yourself. But now let's take a look at the main issue of getting access to the immobilizer function when you do not have a GT105 tool. And to show you the convenience of using a tool like the GT105, let's pretend that this is your OBD2 port on your vehicle and we lost all their keys or we need to program a new key we need to get access to the immobilizer function and that might require that we short out some pins in here now some people will take a wire so it looks like this what we call a jumper wire and then we're gonna try to find the appropriate pin and trying to shove that wire in there and trying to make the connection now hopefully we shorted out the right pins if we didn't we can potentially create more problems or probably in the process of doing so we may have an intermittent connection and the tool remember we're trying to program a new key if we lose the connection at some point we may have a problem programming the key worse i also see in this where people use a little metal such as a paper clip and they're trying to shove that in here again the potential for us to put this in the wrong place is high and also the contacts of the obd2 port are designed to accept a certain size of terminal in certain things that are not like contacts such as a paper clip can damage the obd port on your vehicle when we could have done this very easily with a tool like the GT105. And here's the Godiak GT105. And as you can see, this thing is pretty compact. Now, let me give you a tour of this. On the left-hand side, we have a male OBD2 port. So this side is gonna go to the vehicle. On the right-hand side, we have a female OBD2 port. So this is a pass-through port that can go to our programmer or an OBD2 scanner. Now, if I turn over the unit to the side, we also have an input for power and that is because we can use this to power an OBD tool outside of the vehicle by the power that is supplied through here and then through the GT105 system. And included with the GT105 is the external power supply cable that is going to connect to the power port right here and the other end can go to a battery terminals either directly on the vehicle or to a separate battery that is separate from the vehicle. Now let's take a closer look at the buttons on the front. And starting at the top we have a power LED with which will turn on when the tool has power. The next four LEDs are protocol LEDs. When I take this and I connect this into a vehicle to confirm if the computer is talking, this is gonna identify what protocol the computer is talking with. And as you can see, the very first one is gonna light up if we detect something like the J1850 protocol, which is the BPW or the BWM. Then the next one is gonna light up if we detect something in the CAN high or the CAN low for the third one. And these guys typically come up whenever we detect communication in the ISO 157654 or the SAE J2480 or the J2284 of one of the many flavors that the CAN lines can communicate with. And finally, the last LED is the K line. If we do see this little guy blinking, that we are getting communication in the protocol of ISO 9141, 14230, which is the famous K line. And here's a real life example of how we can use this tool to test on a vehicle. And as we can see, the very first test is checking the OBD2 port for power. Now this is a Dodge Neon 2000 SRT4 and we can see that yep sure enough the OBD2 port is working as far as power is concerned. If I was plugging in a scan tool and my scan tool was not turning on the problem is likely with the scan tool not with my OBD2 port. And the second test is to see if the computer is able to communicate so I'm going to check for that and as you can see sure enough the GT105 is detecting communication and it's also telling us what protocol the computer is attempting to communicate with, which in this case is the J1850 protocol. 
and in the middle of the tool we have five buttons and depending on which one I press the LED in the bottom is gonna light up to let me know that they are active and starting with the one on the left we know that the OBD2 port has two independent grounds one for signal and one for power however if we desire to join those two together we can do that by pushing this button right here and that will short out four and five the next four buttons are all related to immobilizer activation so if we are trying to activate the cluster in our vehicle to connect an advanced tool to program a new key and the very first one will short out pin 1 and 16 now this is convenient for Volkswagen vehicles of the fourth and fifth generation and the next one shorts out pin 4 and 13 which is applicable for some Toyota vehicles that require pin 4 and 13 to be shorted in order to activate the immobilizer function next we have pin 1 and pin 4 this is convenient for vehicles that are Mitsubishi branded and these vehicles will require pin 4 4 and pin 1 to be joined together to activate the immobilizer. And finally we can short out pin 3 and 7 which is convenient for certain Porsche vehicles that require 3 and 7 to be joined together before we can program a new key. Well now let's test the Godiak GT105 with a couple of demonstrations. As you can see I have my voltmeter hooked up to the unit to simulate my car on one side and if I press the very first button I am joining the two grounds which is pin 4 and pin 5. Normally those two grounds are independent because one is signal and one is power and I might have to join in because some tool or program them want me to do so so I can do that very quickly with this button right here but now let's imagine that I'm working on a Volkswagen vehicle that needs to have the immobilizer activated which is pin 1 and 16 and if I activate that with my tool pin 1 and 16 is on and sure enough we get a beep confirming that those two pins have been shorted out together and if I'm working on a Toyota vehicle I know I need to short out pin 4 and pin 13 and again we have confirmation that those two pins are shorted but now let's test the functionality for Mitsubishi vehicles which use pin 1 and pin 4 shorted out and we have a confirmation line and we have a confirmation beep that those pins are indeed now touching together and finally if I happen to be working on a Porsche we know we have to short out pin 3 and 7 and we have again the confirmation light and confirmation beep that we are shorting out the correct pins. But now let's see if we can power up an OBD2 scan tool or programmer outside of the vehicle using the GT105 to provide power to the unit. I'm gonna plug that into the pass-through port <laughs> and sure enough we have power to our tool via the external power supply from the GT105 system. But why is it convenient to be able to power up a scan tool or programmer outside of the vehicle? Well we might want to review the data that we saved on here perhaps live data that we recorded and with the GT105 we can do that without having to go to the vehicle and plug this in again and go through the whole process. Also we may not have access to the inside of the vehicle and we have a tool outside of the vehicle so we can power up that tool because the GT105 is pulling power from the battery terminals directly. And that was the Godiak GT105 immobilizer access tool. Now this tool I think is very convenient because it eliminates us having to manually connect things into the OBD2 port where we can potentially damage something by playing around with wires or a paper clip. So this for a low cost, I think it makes a lot of sense protecting an expensive item like the computer in your car. And I also wanna point out that while the GT105 does enable the immobilizer function in certain vehicles, this doesn't mean that we can make keys right off the car. This is gonna vary tremendously from car to car. I think cars that will let you make keys if you have at least two keys available. I've seen other cars that will let you make keys if you have only one key available. And I've seen cases where if you have no keys left, then you will need to go to the next level, use the GT105 and a professional scan tool to make another key. And the last thing that I wanna point out is that the GT105 tool did not come with any instructions like its big brother, the GT100. That one came with a very nice instruction manual, which is very handy for anybody who's new to using this style of tools. Now the GT105 instruction manual is available on an electronic format, but I would like to see Godiak include a paper manual in future shipments of the GT105 because it's always convenient to have something in paper to be able to refer to. So the GT105 is a tool that complements any existing service tools or special scanner that you may have that has access to the immobilizer function. I have previously reviewed the Launch X431, which does have the ability to make keys for certain vehicles, if not 
most vehicles out in the market. I put a link in the description down below to that review for that programmer if you wanna check it out. I also put a link in the description down below to the GT105 in Mobilizer 2. Super affordable in my opinion, not only because of the ability to access the Mobilizer functionality, but also because it can tell us if the computer is talking and what protocol is it talking on. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this tool, please put that in the comments down below. And if you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And stay tuned as I have a lot more cool gadgets and accessories coming up. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.